Um, all four selectmen are present as well as um, town administrator. Five. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. All right. Announcements. Now I'd like to take you first. Why? Well, because, you know, you know what. I know. Okay, uh, first one, uh, the Onsa Bay Association has taken over the car show that usually is at the Tremont Nail. It will be the 29th, which is this coming Saturday from 9 to 2 o'clock, entertainment, food, etc. Uh, usually somewhere between 100 and 150 cars at the facility. Uh, then the next show the OBA will be doing will be a pig roast and car show, and that will be July 13th. Uh, that show will be from, I think, uh, <laughs> Six o'clock. Uh, again, the car show on the 29th is nine o'clock in the morning till two in the afternoon. There's a potential of rain late in the afternoon, so they should really get that done okay. And there's something else. Oh yeah, Wareham Community Associates, their annual uh, lobster bake at Zecco Marine uh, is, uh, there are tickets available. Usually the members sell them to uh, friends, etc. but just give everybody a heads up. If they normally go to get in contact with people that get their tickets from, they're now available. It's limited to 175 people. Uh, July 17th. Jim? Trail maintenance um, on the West Town Westgate property, Paper Mill Road, 10 to 12 on Saturday. Uh, looking for something to do and learn the property, come on out. And uh, also there's a Carbomerian uh, Wareham um, Regional Refuse District meeting this Thursday, 626, 5 p.m. Carver Fire Station. That's all. Okay. Uh, Mary. No. Okay. Next up, citizens' comments. Is there anyone here to speak to the board this evening? Come on. Come down. I'm on, do I have to wait for this to be Oh, you're already on the agenda, so you don't need to do that. Okay. Next up, board comments. Okay. So I should expand on last week's. Huh? Never mind. Okay, let's go. First off, Swiss Beach Road, Route 6. Um, I got a request from uh, the police department uh, to see if I could do anything else with Mass.5 uh, because we've had three incidents on that road since December. And I noticed myself there are two people in wheelchairs that go across that crosswalk uh, from the Swiss Beach side over to where the market is and the liquor store and possibly even down to Shaw's. Um, when you stop on the right-hand side heading toward Marion to let them go, uh, nine times out of ten, someone comes speeding by on the left side, uh, and it won't be pretty if they hit that uh, wheelchair. So I contacted Mass DOT. Uh, for uh, District 5, and we got a response today, and myself and uh, acting uh, police chief, John Walchek, and I will be going, I think it looks like July 8th or July 9th, to sit down and plead our case for some kind of relief at that intersection. I'm not sure what will happen, but we're going to try. Uh, I made a comment last week on uh, signs and bylaws and stuff, and it seemed to get a lot of response in the uh, Wareham Week blog and, and on Facebook. Uh, it was interesting that people thought that utility poles are, the town can't do anything because we don't own them. That's not the case. The attorney general's approved this, so has town council. Uh, putting a legal sign, no matter where it is, as far as not on your own property is an issue. Um, for the person who thought Alan Slavin was a former uh, school committee member, I've never been on the school committee, sorry. So your comment that if that's the guy, I don't like him. You're, it's your choice going forward. Um, 
What came up really interesting about the signed bylaw and everything else is that the one comment that we hear is enforcement. Uh, we have a lot of rules and regulations in place, and we have a problem simply because we don't have enough staff, and we have to pick and choose which things to enforce and which we can't because we just can't do it all. And the bottom line is when we pass something, the question really should be as a board before the article goes before town meeting and the town meeting, uh, can you enforce this or not? And I'll give you a simple example. Back in the 90s, uh, the Division of Marine Fisheries uh, basically was run by the Marine Fisheries Commission. There were nine commissioners. I was appointed by, at that time, uh, Governor Salucci as to be one of the nine commissioners. And we'd have our meetings once a month and we'd pass fishing, commercial, and, and you know, basically uh, the commercial stuff and the recreational laws. Um, one day I sat and asked our, the captain of the environmental police, we just passed two laws today, can you enforce them? He says, Alan, not a problem but tell me which ones you don't want me to enforce so I can enforce these. Um, I think this is a problem that's endemic to the whole system itself, and I think we need to look at this because if we're gonna pass something, either we enforce it or we shouldn't be bothering at all. So that's just my comment there. And uh, we actually have, and I'm gonna put a little pressure on everybody, a uh, case this past weekend where a person, I don't know who, I know the address, uh, put signs up on the utility poles for a you know, yard sale, whatever. And I believe we have, the enforcement officer has three copies of the signs that were taken. Um, <coughs> one person who's been authorized to take signs down, but you know, also has probably got four or five. But the same person put two signs up, sandwich board signs. One of them was put down on Main Street with our police officer who's on detail, paid detail by the Vera Life where they make that crossing, which is quite dangerous to go across the street by Bessie Park. The sign was right up where he stood. It actually takes away when someone's looking at a sign, they may not see him and it hits something. But the person actually put it up there, but also chained it to one of the town poles that are there, which was quite interesting. Also on, uh, yes, it is funny. Also on Shaw's, same thing, by the traffic light there, same exact deal. So we have pictures, we have date codes on the pictures, and we have copies of the signs. So at this point here, if the town is serious and wants to follow the rules themselves, we have enough there to basically take someone in and, and write them up for serious fines. If not, then we should just make it clear that we're not doing anything. Thank you. Jim? Um, no. No? Peter? Yeah, I don't think I can top that. <laughs> Mary? All right, so I'm going to use this time because uh, um, I went to a sewer commissioner's meeting the other night. Now, typically I'd do this under, what do you call it, but it's more important and it needs to be said when everybody's paying attention, which they tend to do at the beginning of the meeting and not so much at the end. <laughs> so I went to a sewer commissioner's meeting with town council, and we talked about a group of issues with the sewer sewer. One has to do with some odor issues. Uh, another one had to do with, believe it or not, some pumps that are flooding our system, especially when it rains, of course, the sump pumps pump more, and 40% of the inflow going into the plant during a rainstorm is from sump pumps that are not supposed to be in the system. In keeping with that, we were lining a pipe. We just did it. We're doing a bunch of linings, relinings, to make the pumps last, the pipes last for another 50 years so we don't have to go in and dig them out and change them and so on. Well, because of these sump pumps, three of them in particular we ran into, it cost us somewhere about $70,000 because the water comes into the pump while it's being relined from the sump pump um, we are able to keep the sewer back, but we can't keep, because we bypassed it, but we can't keep the water coming from the sump pump, and it goes in and it ruins the liner. Now they got to start all over again and reline that section of the pipe. We're going to go after those three families for that $70,000, just letting everybody know. Enough with the sump pumps. Take them out of the system. Put them in a drain, dry well out in your yard. Do something with them. But you've got to get them out of the system. It's costing us a fortune. 40% of what we take into the plant is just clean water. And we're treating it. And you're paying for it. 40%. 
That's crazy, and that is only during a rainstorm, meaning that there's a certain level that's all the time going into the plant. Because, you know, the groundwater, a lot of people in certain areas have a lot of groundwater. This is very bad situation. And we have no choice to start enforcing it. We have to go after these people. We have to stop it. We can't have it anymore. So if I'm suggesting right now that if you have a sump pump, we are going to do a lot of things to find it out. And we're going to be smoking pipes and doing some things to find all the people with the sump pumps. And when we catch you, it's going to cost you a lot of money. So I would suggest you disconnect them now. It's easy enough to put them out in a dry well. All right, I, I just had to do that. It's a real bad situation. There's also a bunch of other good things happening that uh, we're going to be working on in the plant to, um, to stop some of the odor issues and things of that nature that a lot of people have been having trouble, trouble with. So that's going to be changing the plant a little bit in that vein as well. But we've got to get this sump pump thing under, under control. Right now, at this point, our lagoons are overflowing when we get a heavy rainstorm. That means we have to call DEP. We've got to have an issue because they've got to okay it. Then we've got to clean it up. All right. I'm going to let the rest of it. i got other things, but we'll let that go. All right, next up, uh, appointments, reappointments, and interviews. Old Colony Elder Services Board of Directors, Yvonne Hitchens. Is she here? Yes, not. All right. Motion, please. Okay, I move that we approve the application for Yvonne Hitchens for, um, for the Old Colony Elderly Services Board of Directors for a term to expire no later than June 30th, 2020. Motion made by Mary, a second by Peter. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, abstaining, it's unanimous. We're here in Veterans Council. Paul Geigel? How do you say it? Geigel? Geigel. Geigel. Is Not he here? here? Not here. No. All right. Motion. Okay. Um, I move that we reappoint Paul Geigel to the Wareham Veterans Council for a term to expire no later than June 30th, 2022. Second. All right. Motion made by Mary, seconded by Alan. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining, it's unanimous. All right, so next up, we have a hearing at 715 on the application from Gateway Motors of Wareham LLC, 381 Main Street, Wareham, Mass., for a Class over, two license. Uh, over no, I did. They, they, there was nobody here to talk. Somebody issued an invitation to the Council on Aging Board to be here this evening? Well, it's, it, it, it's, uh, it's, somebody issued an invitation to you? We did. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's not on here. Uh, okay, you know what? It's okay. It's we'll okay. It we'll take it up. Don't worry. We'll get to you. I promise. All right? We'll do it. All right? Just give me a little bit of time with these people and we'll do it, okay? There was, there was also a second group that was supposed to come. It was just a transfer. Okay? Over we can get it. We'll do it. Cause the issue. What we're trying to do is trying to get an update from everybody on different boards. And for some reason or another, it didn't get on to the agenda. So we'll, but we'll do it anyway. All right. Now, the first thing I need from you is the green cards. So, my John's No, those those are not the green cards. The gr okay, that's what I need. So, how many are there? One, two, three. There's four. There's one missing. Okay. Well, that means that they probably didn't sign for it, which can happen. But it's okay. We have those for notice. All right. Good. <clears throat> All right. Um, for the address. Hold on. Hold on. It's here. Yeah, there may be an issue. 379 Main Street. Yeah, he's... Site improvements at 379 Main. No, it did... You, you want to talk to Alan about this? He already made a phone call. All right, hold on. We're going to... I will get to it in a second, okay, Alan? I just want to make sure we get everything in place. First, got to open the hearing, okay? 
<clears throat> so, uh, motion made by Peter to open the hearing, <laughs> seconded by Alan. Roll call, please. Alan. Yes. Jim. Yes. Mary. Yes. yes. Peter. Patrick. Yes. Okay, now the hearing's open. Now, did you want to say something before we started? Yeah, we have a little issue. Uh, the application is for 381. Unfortunately, everything in the town records, tax purposes, etc., is 379, just so you know. Uh, what happened is, uh, for some reason, I got a hold of the owner of the property, and it's 377 to 381, uh, which are numbers, but the town, for tax purposes and for assessor's purposes, have everything rolled into 379. So I believe what we're going to have to do is basically put this through and make the change from 381 to 379. And somewhere down the line, as you develop that property, because some of it you're not buying, you're probably going to have to make a, a request to change the license. Strategy. That's going to be a problem okay. because the abutters lists could have changed, and you have to go get another abutters list. It would be the same abutters list they have, yeah. actually. Are we sure of that? Yes, I'm positive. 379 is right in the middle of the piece of property. It's, it's in the middle of the 377 property? 377 and 381. Okay, but it, it goes 500 feet, so I understand, you're still yeah. okay with nobody else has been dragged in? Okay. As long as you're, you're sure of that. Yeah, no, I called the owner as well okay. just to make sure I wasn't wrong. I'll try to look the property references up while you guys are doing that. Okay, this. the other thing is, is this is in, um, what is it? It's in, um, uh, what do you call it, district? Um, Wayham Village, right? Village Did you look one. up to see, uh, does this need a zoning uh, hearing? No. You sure? It's, it's because we issued a license to what would really be probably 377 to Mr. Fitzgerald back about. I remember six that, but ago. did he go in front of the zoning board? Uh, wasn't necessary for that, no. You know what? We, let's, no. let's look and be sure so we don't run into a problem. It's because you had uh, the gas station with repair and cars, and you also had down in the back there's an auto body shop, etc. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. Go to the use table. Uh, can you do that, Derek? Can you look up the use <coughs> table, please? <coughs> And look, uh, it's pretty clear. It says uh, you, uh, you, uh, used autos, and then it, if you come down the list, it tells you what zones you need a special permit in. Some of the, there is a couple of zones that are a matter of right, and uh, that may be it, believe it or not, because I think I looked once upon a time, and it sort of the line is sort of right in there somewhere. Okay. So why don't you tell us what you're going to do? <coughs> why don't we go with that first, as okay. we go along anyway? All right. Um, I'm John Mello. This is my and partner, Joe. Joe Saro. How are you doing? Good. This How is you? Bill Madden from JF Engineering. Uh, we're applying for a Class 2 li license at the property that we're discussing right now. Um, we're applying for a 37-car license right now. Um, we're you know, able to answer any questions that you might have, the specifics about what we plan to do, but that's the general idea. Okay. Mr. Chair? Jim sa Jim's saying it's time. Go ahead. So okay. we're going, uh, village one. Question that we always have to ask is uh, me, the repair of vehicles that are warranted, et cetera. Uh, is the repair going to be please, uh, at the facility or are you going to go off facility to have the repair work done? Everything's going to be off, off facility. We don't plan on doing any work there. And you've made arrangements and have a contract or whatever? Yes. Thank you. Okay, hold on. Go ahead, Jim. That's um, allowed in Wareham Village 1. Yeah. Oh, just allowed, it's allowed as a in Wareham right. Village 1, which I and believe That's Wareham Village in. 1, so we're okay. All right, that's good. <clears throat> You've got to make sure because otherwise you're just spinning your wheels. and. Uh, Mr. Right, Chair, so. also. Patrick, just to make sure the public knows also, this is our last Class Two license at this point. This is the last one, yes. All right, so let me just take a look here. I'm just looking at your <coughs> plan. Uh, I see you've got parking for customers, which is good. You've got employee parking. Uh, are you going to run a garage? No, we have no plans to run. Are you going to service on site? No. Do you have an agreement? with a service, somebody to service the cars? Yes, we do. Do you have a copy of that? I do not. Okay, I need a copy of that before we can issue the license, okay? Um, you have to have, by, by statute, you have to have either on-site repair or an agreement with a facility to do the repairs. Um, does, is the, um, does he have the, um, the $25,000 share you want in the Good packet? Question. 
Give me a minute. Keep okay. Submi we submitted it in there. Talk so. about something else? Yeah. Talk about <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do a lot of talking about other stuff. Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. Yes. Western surety, right? 25000 Okay, good. All right, so the bond's in place. It looks like the, this is the display area. Now it says proposed future of uh, car expansion. So just take a look. How many uh, cars are you asking for at this time? 37. 36, 37, right? On the other side of the building, you got two cars. <coughs> They're a little tight in here. Mm. Yeah, it's in front of the building on Main Street. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's a little. Mm. They want to display them though. Yeah. Well, everything else is behind the building, so I'm sure they want to. Oops, I'm sure they want to do that for visibility. Well, this is. Yeah, that, I mean that's that's true. Yeah. Yeah, because he's got everything in the back, <coughs> back behind the building. So you're going to put your your two hottest models out front, and the that was the that was the plan. Yeah. You don't have much visibility there with them in the back, so it makes it a little difficult. Yeah. But okay. I don't have a problem with it. So you're asking for the 37 up front, and then you have 10 future spaces. It looks like to me you can fit 10 in there easily. So why would you not just ask for the 10 spaces now? I think that it depended on what the rest of the property was going to be used for. We want to make it available to potentially rent to tenants, and we didn't okay. want to commit to that now and then have that hamstring us. Okay, down that's road. fine. That's fine. All right, so 37 cars. Now, there's a couple of things I want to just tell you ahead of time because we've been having a lot of trouble with people. You can have cars there that are obviously ready for service. You can even have cars there that are getting ready to go on your line. Okay. But your display area has to be the 37 cars and only 37 cars. And, you know, this gets to be a problem because some people try to fill the whole lot with automobiles and just say, well, these are my only 37 cars. <laughs> it's not going to go. Okay? Just try to, you know, work within your number. If you need more, come back and we'll, we'll you know, with a plan and we'll deal with it. You know what I mean? But don't try to, like, overuse it. You know what I'm saying? It's just not a good thing. It's not good for you. It's not good for us. Anybody have any questions? I don't. No. Nope. Nope. No questions. All right. No. Let's see. Hold. What's the uh, setback on your um, cars out front from the sidewalk? Um, I did not. I'm Bill Madden from GAF on behalf of the applicant. Um, we don't. We did not see anything in zoning that required a setback for the vehicles from a property line or a uh, or a street line. I, I would just think about you know vandalism. People I can tell you what it is if I had a tape. Uh, one of a measure. In, in in response to that, one of the things yeah, that is proposed and uh, just to update update the well, selectmen. Twenty feet to the rear. We filed with conservation. Street. We had a, a hearing with them, fact, for, the and they line. issued a negative determination on it. And well, we're currently in front of the planning board oh, yeah, for site, site plan review. Anyway. So as part of your application, right site plan review is required. Is so, as part of this project, the display area, the plan shows a, a security fence that will go along the rear of the property, tie into the side of the building that they're going to use Sorry. as the office, and tie into the back building on the site. So that was done for the sole purpose of providing security to the site. I was just, I was just asking about the two spaces in the front. Oh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Did they do site plan review on this? Um, it's, it's a great. There's an issue. Yeah, oh, yeah, it requires site plan review. Property. I, was, I was just wondering about that. The reason for that is the seventh going to be in front of the planning board or the eighth? The eighth of July with the planning board. For one and for two, there's going to be runoff from the cars. What did you say the number should be on the... They're going to come back and at us, I'm telling you right now, without site plan review. Okay, so um, anybody else? No, I would recommend we make a motion to accept with the provision that we hold the license until they provide us with a copy of the contract for repair work. 
Okay, the other thing too is um, they need site plan review and they haven't done site plan review. Yeah, well, they have to, we have to hold off now. So we'll hold until they get we'll this site plan review done. Okay, approval by the planning board. Okay, right. Because uh, it requires site plan review when you haven't done that. You go in front of them because, because it's on, especially where it's a change of use and also an automotive use, they'll have some requirements for drains or whatever to protect the environment and you gotta do it, it's okay? So we'll, we'll, we'll probably, we'll see when we vote, give you a license for cars, but then you, at least you know. Now you can go to site plan review and get the rest of the stuff out of the way, okay? Great. All right, we'll hold it until you're done. Once we get the approval from the planning board, then we'll give you what you need, all right? Great. Okay, so go ahead. I just did. Okay, so, so basically those are the two things. We need that contract and you gotta go for site plan review. Okay, so that's two things. All right, second. By Mary. Okay. Motion made by, well, wait a minute. Let's close the public hearing first. Yes. Sorry. Could I have a so motion? Moved. To, motion made by Peter to close the hearing. Seconded by Alan. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Opposed? Yeah. Abstaining? Roll call. Roll call. Oh, roll call. Peter? You're having a tough night. I am yes. having a tough night. Peter? <laughs> Alan? Yes, dear. Jim? Yes. Mary? Myself? All right. Now let's have that motion, Alan. <laughs> motion I previously made. Same motion you made. Second. Second. By Mary Still. All right. Motion made by Alan. Seconded by Mary. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstaining. It's unanimous. So you have your license and for 37, 37 cars. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now go, for, go forth and do site plan <laughs> review. <laughs> you Thank you. We'll put these in the file, okay? okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's bring the. Uh, the I'm going to bring them up. Get the library out. Yeah. Could I have the library folks come forward now, please? Council on aging. Council on aging. I'm sorry. Come on down. So the reason why. So uh, we are calling it. We've got a little confusion in our office right now because someone is retiring and someone is taking over so there's a little bit of sort of things going on but yes we are bringing in all of the boards and having conversations to see where they are if there's anything we can do to help them you know so and so so that's why you're here tonight so maybe you can give us an update of how it's going and so on let and me, then yeah let me let me do a rundown first of what we have accomplished are you going to pull that right at you though because the mic right in your face all right <laughs> Um, first of all, we have reinstated the beacon because it went defunct when there was no board. Um, and we now not only distribute 1,500 around town, but we mail out 350 every month. I have a team of volunteers who fold them and stuff them and get them out to the, anybody who signs up. Mm -hmm. And that, so far, is, uh, is free. They used to charge for it. We don't charge at the moment. Um, that may change because of postage, but right now it's free. Uh, we, of course, do the trips to Foxwood, which I'm sure you know about. Um, on Tuesday morning, we have instituted a coffee hour from 9.30 to about 10. And then that segues into chair volleyball, which I know sounds funny, but it's, it's a terrific it's game. Mm -hmm. We have a great time. And I think if we haven't accomplished anything else, with our activities. The fact that we get some of the people from the adult daycare in there to play volleyball makes whatever we have done worthwhile. Uh, we nice. provided computers. Uh, we only have three, and we've kind of uh, deferred to the library for any kind of pro programs. We just are not geared, geared to do that kind of thing. And we recently paid a lot of money to have the big community room cleaned and they washed those walls right up, to this, right up to the windowsills. And because of that, we would like to ask to have it painted. Now, um, that's not something we can do. I'm sure that because it's town property, the town would have to do that. But I, I, we, don't, we don't even care what color you paint it. But it's, it's old and you can wash it forever and it's just never gonna come completely clean. And people refer to it as the dungeon. So we would like to have that painted, and also the coffee room that we use, room 208, that could use a coat of paint as well. There again, because people come in from the outside, 
for the coffee hour, for the volleyball, and they see these rooms that look dingy, and they need to have something done to them. Okay. And I would like at least one person from this board to meet with me any day of your choosing and walk through this building and see if we can't please carve out some more space for us. We are desperate for space. They, they have put file cabinets in the big room that we used to use for our exercise class, which upsets us every time we walk past the room. And it seems to me that those file cabinets could go someplace else in this building. So if somebody would like to take that job on, if you just contact me, um, I'd be happy to meet with you whenever, and we'll do a walkthrough of the building and see what's available. Who's the liaison? Uh, Does anybody know? Okay. Do I? Let me know. There you go. So I, Let me I know. I appreciate that. We've worked with uh, the school and such. That is the school. I know. Okay. And any space in the building at all, or just that room? At all. Okay, all right. Now, did you want to talk about And we don't have anything to do with painting either. That goes through the requests. You'd have to request it through, uh, through Derek's office. That's a day-to-day -day thing. What? The painting. So we can't painting. really help you with that. We'll, uh, I will, obviously, he's heard it, and uh, hopefully that will, hopefully, okay, hopefully that will get us somewhere. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, there was also a matter of um, the daycare people getting dropped off at the handicapped ramp and meeting other vehicles parked there that prevented the Gatra bus from getting to the right spot. Um, bus driver was very upset the other day about it. And it's also been noted that um, one of the men that spends some time here was actually dropped off by whoever gave him a ride at the wrong door. And with his walker, he was shuffling <coughs> towards the ramp um, trying to get to the right place, and I don't know, you know, maybe he didn't have the wherewithal to say, this is the wrong door, I need to go somewhere else. But anyway, we'd like some signage that's, that says, you know, no parking here, this is handicap drop-off for the buses. buses, you know, buses bringing daycare people, however the signage goes, that it would be a designated spot for no parking so that the bus can get to the right place. Well, that makes kind of sense, Derek. Does that make There's sense? There's nothing out there that indicates that I mean, that's what that's used for. Nobody should be parking for. ramp anyway. No, nobody, should be nobody should be there ever. But there's nothing that says, and, and, that and says yesterday it, when I came in, they there shouldn't was be there, um, so maybe we can a truck picking that. up something from somewhere in this building, and okay. he was parked there. All right. And yeah, they're trucks All right. there a lot. That makes sense. I mean, they shouldn't, nobody should ever be parking in front of handicapped accessibility, yeah. ever. But you know, some people don't care and they don't pay any attention. So I mean, I don't, I'm not sure that the sign's even going to help. We'll put up sign. a sign and they'll probably look at it and say, "Well, I'm going to park here anyway." Yeah, right. At least no, if there's a sign, we've got a fighting right. chance. Yes. <laughs> so that was requested also. Okay. Okay. Any ladies have anything? Yes. Delivery is normally down in the back receiving door there. So there is no excuse for a truck to be there. Well, it wasn't actually a delivery. It was a pickup. They came out with two, um, two wheelers filled with cardboard boxes. It doesn't matter so, what it is. It's not supposed to be there. Yeah, so yeah, there's um, actually a, a we don't place know who he was or what they had. Yeah. But, and that's um, what those lines are with the thing there. That actually signifies you're not supposed to park there. Type are there lines that? out there? Yes, there are. Yeah, there are. But it doesn't is it fire lane? It doesn't yeah, say that's what that is. Yeah. But yeah, a sign would help to fire away. To signify the <laughs> handicap drop-off would be very helpful. Yeah, we'll have to get that something done there. Appreciate it. Okay. Yes, that's all we got. Oh, yeah. Well, I just want to that's say one thing, too, is, is we are very fortunate at this point to have Missy as our director. She has put life back into the Council of Aging now. and she Very has, nice. Has, it's very obvious she has provided many many programs now for the seniors um, I don't know what we do without her and I'd hate to see her leave and I, I know she had to f 
get her own grants to pay her salary last year, whatever, and um, I, I saw her many times in the office volunteering her time being there filling in for other people. She is an amazing person, and I hate to lose her. Okay. But she's, she's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We've talked to her about maybe yeah. taking the next, the next step. Could yeah. you give us uh, each of your names for the record, please? Could you tell us each of your names for the record? Oh, uh, Sharon Frank, Janet Wilson, Nancy Sawyer, Anne Marie Dunn. Thank you. Otherwise, we we got to put it in there that you were here. <laughs> to see that. Okay. Is there any questions of any, any questions of any board members? I don't have any questions, but I did learn that the Garden Club is going to be doing garden therapy at the Adult Daycare Center. Next yes, year. So yes, I was excited to hear that. I hadn't heard that. Are they? Yes. It's a, it's actually a lot of fun. You mm -hmm. guys will be seeing a lot of a lot more of me anyway. <laughs> a lot of the other Garden Club members. That's a lot of fun. Garden we come therapy. In, we've been doing it at the Adult Daycare Center, um, the Gateway, the gateway. Yeah. Yeah. for years. And now I guess we're going to move over there and do it. So it's a lot of fun. We do floral arrangements and have, you know, we get to know everyone. It's good energy, good activity. Sounds like fun. Yep. Nice. Sounds like fun. I'd just yeah. like to say thanks for coming in and um, bringing, your concerns, bringing concerns to us. Otherwise, otherwise we would not have known. I mean, I didn't know you had these issues of concerns. Oh, okay. So right. this, this, you know, informs us. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Well, thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so okay. much. Thank you. Okay. The next is an application from Barnacle Bob's Inc. DBA Barnacle Bob's and or BB's to 2424 Cranberry High for a change of hours. How you doing? Good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Madam Clerk, members of the board, Mr. Town Administrator, Tim Schifoni, uh, manager of Barnacle Bob's. We're doing business as BB's Bar and Grill, 2424 Cranberry Highway, and I'm here tonight requesting a slight tweaking of the operating hours. Okay. Um, just generally due to um, the way the um, business has been settling this year, uh, we're requesting a change primarily um, on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. So currently, it's Sunday from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m., Monday from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Tuesday is where there's going to be a change. It's currently uh, 12 noon to 11 p.m., and we're asking for 4 p.m. to 10 p.m., Wednesday is currently noon to midnight, and we're asking noon to 11 p.m. And I believe the rest of the hours are the same. And Mr. Okay, now there was a question about the 4th of July. Uh, yes, there was a last minute um, request, and I wasn't sure if it actually got before the board tonight or not, but if it did, um, we were it's, uh, asking to be allowed to be closed well, on the 4th. Need to be, so you want it to be closed on the 4th of July. Yes. Your request has 4 p.m. to 12. So um, it's a little different now. The, the rules, the way they do it is a little different. Okay. So we can't change it right now. But you can, any day you can close if you send... Um, um, a, a selectman and the police department a notification Very that good. you're going to be closed and you can close on that day if you so choose okay excellent but I can't change what you've put on the thing because that's that's the way it is it goes to ABCC and I can't change it certainly understandable all right we used to be able to tweak that stuff we can't anymore Okay, but that's fine. That's that's he has to send that to us and to the police department, and it's better to do it like the day before, or a couple of days before. Very good. All right. So these will be the new hours, though, officially. Okay. Let me just double check. Was that Thursday the same, or was that different? the uh, Thursday would be yes, correct. twelve to eleven? Okay. Yes. So that sheet is correct. Yep. So if you can make the motion based on the sheet, it'll be great. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm. <laughs> no, he got me this time. 
Um, okay, um, I move that we accept the change of hours for um, Barnacle Bob's, a.k.a. Uh, BB's, <laughs> um, to reflect the hours as presented. here written. Is that good? As, Second. As submitted, yes. Good enough. As submitted. Second. Very good. Okay, motion made by Mary, seconded by Peter. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining is unanimous. Thank you, sir. Thank you, and have a good evening. Thank Next you, up, sir. the application from Trevor S. Watson for a one-day liquor license for June, and this is really not a one-day license. There's a whole bunch of them. So <laughs> it's uh, June 29th and 30th, <laughs> July 6th and 7th, July 13th, 14th, July 20th and 21st, July 27th and 28th. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's 10 days. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. So How tell you? us what's going on. All right, well, my name is Lane White, and I am here representing Trevor. He had um, some meetings this evening, and I am actually helping him with, with this endeavor. Um, he is wanting to just have a small, intimate gathering a couple of nights, Saturday and Sunday evenings, with um, beautiful desserts, espresso, some wine, and craft beers just for people to have a very relaxed, easy, quiet place to go for conversation, to wait for a meal at a local restaurant, or to come for dessert. Okay. Uh, hmm. there, is, there is a limit on the number of one days we can give to 30. one person, but I, yeah, I thought it was 30. 30. It's 10. It's not the it's not the limit. It's the use. Um, typically, these are we give these out for uh, nonprofits who are you know raising money or something of that nature. It's not typical, but this is not a typical situation. Yeah. Just so you know, Buzz's we Bay know Playhouse. that. Go ahead. Buzz's Bay, Buzz's Bay Playhouse. We yeah, exactly. So, and this is not a typical situation. And and believe it or not. I did find out a little bit about about Mr. Watson and he, the little red inn over there and uh, some of the stuff he's been doing and he seems like a, a pretty nice gentleman doing a nice job for the town so we're apt to look at that a little bit better, you know. It's <laughs> very kind of you. <laughs> uh, that's what I hear anyway. Um, so and I, th I believe the town administrator has some information he may want to weigh in. Mm. Yeah, I think is it going to go out into the sort of the courtyard area? Yes. With the, okay. Trevor has done an amazing job on that building. Yep. Uh, the inside is really very much like you were in someone's home. He displays his art. There's beautiful couch and table seating, but he has totally enclosed his property so that it's not accessible from outsiders on the street unless they come in the front door. Um, it is landscaped. It looks almost like as if you're in Italy and you're in a courtyard <coughs> garden with beautiful tables and lighting and piped in music. So it's a very, like I said, it's a very intimate setting. Um, we're, we're really thinking that it will be more often word of mouth for people. We don't plan on doing a lot of advertising. Um, Trevor has a, a large network of people to begin with anyway. There are 40, 46 seats there and he, between and he, the inside and the outside. Nice art. And then there's uh, you're TIPS using, certified, you'd be the... I'm the TIPS, I'm TIPS certified. Okay. Um, I am a retired restaurant manager. I was the manager of Trevi Cafe in Mashpee Commons for many years. And I've been, I like to call it redirected now for a couple He's of years. And I have been friends He's with Trevor for many, many years. And when he approached me, I thought that it would be a a really fun thing for our neighborhood in Point Independence. And he's done some of the uh, fundraisers for the Boys and Girls Club for music and other, other functions. That and he did the, the one for the beautification um, committee for Onset and raised um, a lot of money for the beautif Onset beautification. He's really a benevolent um, local yeah, guy. He's, he's got liquor liability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Temporary registration certificate. So he's everything's here. 
Everything seems to be in order. I don't see any issues at all. No. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, what are we carrying for insurance? Patrick? Million. What is it? Million two. Uh, one and two. Million two. Okay. Uh, Trevor was up at the office selectman when I was there. Uh, he mentioned that he had the open area. Did he supply a layout of the open area to make sure uh, there's control? I'm not up? sure that we have control that. On that. I don't I had mentioned that to him. I don't think that's there. Uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea if he gave us a drawing of the facility. Could you get us a drawing of the area ask. that's encompassed when they're serving the alcohol? Yeah, certainly. If you would, please, and drop that off when you pick up the certificate, okay? Uh, I'm pretty sure Trevor's capable of drawing something yeah. out. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not worried. I'm also a degreed landscape designer myself, so I'm sure we could okay, come great. up with it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that'd be great. So we know the limits of it and all that, you know? Uh-huh. So what right. would, is would like else? A, a layout plan that shows the table? Yes. Chair, seating? Okay. Yeah, you want to show where the liquor is being served in the building. See, that becomes the area that is licensed, basically. Now, the liquor is, can be stored into a compartment. If you're going to store it in another space, you have to incorporate that in as the storage section. Okay. Okay? Thank you. All right. All right. Anybody else? I, um, I would like to know what, what the zoning is there. What the what is? You can pull it up faster than um, <laughs> well, for that. For that. I, just, I can't pull up the map. That's uh, OB1, OB2. You mean as far as it's zoning? Um, yes. I don't, I don't know. I don't have the map. And what I remember for that area is that the, Hold on. I'll get it. there was a pizza shop across the street. We had the pizza shop, and then there was the Seaside store for many years, which right. is right next to Trevor's building. I think where Trevor is, there was a bakery either there or a bakery next door. Mm -hmm. The bakery was next door. Well, we can look oh, it up. Well. And I'm, I'm sure we'll be cognizant of the you just, and stuff. All you got to do is look up the uh, um, field. You said it's piped in music. Oh, you know, very yeah. quiet. Yeah. Very yeah. quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. quiet yeah. Yes, it does. It's not it going to be loud, right raucous kind of music. Yeah, it's just, like I said, it's an yeah. intimate yeah. setting. What do, you, what do you put on there? A soiree? Derek, your mic is off when you're talking, by the way. Probably not. Probably not. It's right. Out, this is out back, right? Um, yes, it's in this, the side and the, the lighting, out back. The lighting that's over that side. The lighting, side, right? and there's um, another small building back there as well. But like I said, he has fenced in and totally Haunted enclosed Village District. his whole property. So it's Haunted Village District. Yeah, it's just, you know, yeah, there's, village there's no parking requirements because of that also. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? I have none. Could I have a motion, please? Um, I move that we um, that we approve the one-day liquor licenses for Trevor Watson um, as presented in this packet. <laughs> <laughs> Second. Thank you, Mary. Second. All right. Motion made by Mary, seconded by Peter. Any more discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining. It's unanimous. Five zero zero. Thank you very much. Thank you. I hope, now, you, hope it works ask, out. Um, when do we pick up the... You can uh, bring that drawing in, and you probably can pick it up tomorrow afternoon. Perfect. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Well, later in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you there. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Next up is to accept a donation from Diane here to the Wareham Free Library. Okay, I make a motion that um, we accept a donation of $100 on behalf of the Town of Wareham for the Wareham Free Library in memory of George Shaw from Christine Hurt. Hurt. Second. Okay, motion made by Mary, seconded by Alan. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining, it's unanimous. Thank you. Town Administrator's report. This is a two week report. Uh, so it's, it's a, a weak report. report, all right. Hope it's weak. Right? <laughs> it's a weak report. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The uh, first item I'm going to ask to bring forward is actually because of the uh, change w w to the OBA for the uh, signs, and it's it's kind kind of mixed. I think we think we would have been all set, but bringing it forward to you with the, the car show. yeah with the car show, and it's for signs for Main Street in front of Toby Hospital, corner of Cranberry Highway and Depot Street, um, Elm Street in the intersection of Elm and Tyonet, and Tyonet in Route 28. Need a motion. 
Yes, I do. Uh, move that we approve the sign locations as presented. Okay, motion made by Peter, seconded by Mary. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose, abstains, unanimous. Okay, so now I want to make a point. Allen abstains. Okay, so it's four zero one. All right, so I want to make a point. Uh, we've been doing these signed things under 48 hour business. This is not acceptable 48 hour business, okay? There's no emergency in a sign, all right? So we have to stop it. This was an unusual right? case, Patrick. So what I'd like to do, what I'd like to do is I would like to, first off, all these sign things are getting kind of ridiculous anyway. We keep bringing them up and so on and so forth. So this is what I'd like to do. I'd like the board, and I'm gonna put it on the agenda for next time, authorize the, the chair and the clerk to uh, just authorize these things as a matter of course. Okay, so that we can look at them, see what they are, and just sign off on them so they don't have to come in front of the board all the time. That way there's no issues about 24 hours or anything else. I won't be here, but I like it. Yeah. Okay. It's good for me. Nice. All right, so I'm gonna bring when, it when's up. When's the last time we said no? Never. <laughs> so exactly is the answer to the question. That's I the think. point. And, yeah. And uh, and you know what? And it just seems silly to bring it forward to every meeting. And believe it or not, more people are late than than not late. Just so you know. <laughs> All right. We just did it, right? Okay. We just allowed. It. We just voted that, so we're good. Sucks. Okay, this goes with this. This goes in that Sorry. packet. Goes in All right. For this Anything here. else, okay. sir? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, I was at the uh, Mayflower Municipal Health Group, uh, the general board meeting. I was uh, re-elected to the steering committee for them. So I'll be serving another term for the, on the uh, steering committee. And just some information. So we are part of the Mayflower Municipal Health Group, which is a joint purchasing group, basically a consortium. Uh, it's worked out really well for us. We did have some spike in uh, some of the, the rates after a series of uh, low, low increases. And then what you started hearing was the rumblings that Mayflower's in trouble. What, why did you do this? So I just want to give uh, some updates on the consortium as a whole. As of uh, well, right through the end of April, they're running for for uh, uh, projections projections about 6.5 million higher than what they they'd expected, and I mean higher to the good. In other words, the what we are expecting for having to have paid, we're, we have a surplus of 6.5 million. And the group overall is running right now after the IBNR of 6.95 million and under premiums of about 1.3 million. The net assets are a little over 22.8 million. And they, they were projected two years ago to be as low as uh, 8 million in net assets. So it's been a great group. It's helped uh, the FY20 rates are only a 1.5% increase. So they're, they're doing pretty darn well. And if this trend continues, we can see at least another low rate. Uh, one of the things I've recommended is to never go back to the zeros, though, because frankly, they did a couple years of zeros. And once that caught up to you, because that's a compounding factor, it was a, it was a massive increase. So you always want to keep on building that a little bit. And I'd rather have, when it comes to the municipal budget, and I'll give you the sort of the visual, it's much easier to absorb this, this you know, the steadiness, than it is the, the ebbs and flows. That's so, how uh, it's been a great group that we've been a part of, and I really appreciate your support in getting into it. The other item is just uh, just something I was driving last Thursday. I was heading out of town, and I, I drove out of here, and I was taking a left onto uh, High Street. And a gentleman pulled up in a pickup, and my window's down. And he said, "Hey, your you know your gas lid's open." I said, "All right, thanks." And he starts looking. He was re getting ready to back up, you know, maybe to try try and get it from me. I said, "I'll be okay. I'm going to pull over." Next guy pulls up behind him, and I hear a thump, and I'm thinking, "Oh no, he whacked it," you know. But he pulled up and said, "Closed it for you," and drove off. And you know, it's it's kind of when we. 
you keep on hearing all the negative stuff and there's just good folk in this town. So it's, it's just one of those simple things, but it really meant a lot that somebody cared enough to lean over and just hit your ga you know, the, the gas door closed. And that's the simple acts of kindness I really appreciate from this town. And you know, that doesn't make the little blogs or the quips or things like that, but that's the real town and I appreciate it. They probably stuck a GPS on there. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be honest with you, uh, last week I had a lot to say about, uh, you know, how we treat our town and, and how we uh, represent ourselves and how we're very negative and so on. And I'll tell you, this week I was pretty proud. I didn't see as much negativism as, as I have in the past. And I don't know if it helped that I, uh, you know, I said it's time to take pride in your town and, and love it and take care of it because, you know, it is, it is us. And there's good people here. Everybody is there's good people. Lots of good people in this town that will help you out in a minute, and not just with a gas gas tank either, with a lot of stuff, lots of stuff. So let's keep it positive. They didn't need to do that. I can tell you, most places nobody would have cared. It just well, we laughed at you. Oh yeah, so it was nice. I you know, they it. notice things too. You know, uh, they see stuff that's going on. We just had a big bust the other day. Uh, you know, thanks to our police department. They got a call from some people. The next thing you know, they had this big bus go on. We got a bunch of uh, drugs, money, scales, you know, the whole nine yards. And they took three people out of a house, uh, actually on the old street I used to live on. So that's very nice. Yeah, so uh, it's a good thing, not a bad thing. And that's because people are paying attention and they care about the town, so they mention these things. The police take it seriously. They do a great job. All right, next up. Um, I'd like to uh, yeah. ask Patrick, Mr. Sullivan, a question on the um, Mayflower Compact. You're a self, uh, is this a self-funding insurance program? It is, yes. And it's been uh, very good for all the communities, the cost, the structure. You're able to keep the costs down as compared to being into a a full policy program with the Commonwealth or otherwise. Right, it's been doing better than those. Uh, they, we've had, uh, we're doing well compared to some of the areas and it is, it's really good insurance. And that's one of the big things for some of our employees. And I know uh, some folks that maybe don't have access to, to such insurance get upset about it, but it's one of, one of the things that we're able to offer and keep it, uh, keep it uh, within a within a nice price and people forget the employees um, going on a few years ago changed uh, worked with us to change the health splits which saved the town roughly you know between eight nine hundred thousand dollars annually so that's great thank you, know, you. Thank it is really good insurance yeah I, I do it at my work and in the days where you're getting less and less and less and less for your Wow. That's number two. Never mind. <laughs> Anybody else? Sorry. Mr. Administrator, are you set? I, I am. Thank you. And uh, happy 4th of July to everybody. Appreciate thank you. Yeah. I'm wearing my 4th shirt. Just got my little flags on. Um, liaison reports. Jim. Um, attended the recycling committee meeting, uh, discussed issues surrounding recycling and the transfer stations. Good talking with them. Um, we'll be meeting somewhat uh, regularly and hopefully I can get some input from them on um, the transfer station and, and what their thoughts are, which I did somewhat already. So that was nice. And um, also, uh, could you? you know, the selectmen through you, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, send out the town meeting time frames for warrant articles to the committees. That was kind of posed last night. And um, I know it's changed somewhat. And uh, if you could do that, so we get the committees to submit in a timely fashion, the articles that they're gonna want on uh, the warrant. Well, we, we do, do that we as do a, that. yeah, we do that as a. It's just, they're working on some stuff already and they, they pose that question to me. And I know we discussed, okay. the, did we discuss that last week? Yeah, we, uh, we won't open the warrant until I think it's the 30th. But, but we, before that, 30th of before July. that, we do read into the record the timeline 
uh, for the warrant, which includes opening it, uh, <clears throat> you know, the notification times when the town moderator and the finance committee chairman and whatnot get so their we copies. Set that yet? Or we have? No, we haven't. But we, that's we won't be doing it until the thirtieth. Now the other thing too, uh, July. The other thing too is that process uh, could be altered once the attorney general uh, signs off on the article from. Springtown meeting that will, that will adjust those timelines somewhat. But only if we haven't already called the meeting. So if we get to Correct. the 30th and it hasn't, it'll be under the old rules. Okay? So that's what will happen. But if I basically said the, the earlier that they put their articles together and have their public meetings that they're going to need necessary, um, they'd be ready to move forward. Yeah, we'll, we'll, have, we'll be setting the line on the 30th, so we'll know right, the 30th you. of July. And then you'll send out a yep. notice to them. Yep. And it, we always send notices to them all, by the way. All right. Next up, um, anybody else? Oh, wait. Alan, I'm sorry. Did I forget you? <laughs> I know I, I could never forget you, Alan. It was a quiet week as far as the town goes for committees. There was very few meetings. Um, the, I did uh, at the Plymouth County level. Um, I admit last week I mentioned I basically uh, have sent a request out to our local state rep uh, about the county financial situation going forward over the next up to 2029 with uh, basically off the cliff financially starting in 2024. And I've asked to have a meeting to sit down to find out how uh, county government can recoup another 10 percent of their fees that go to the state right now. And that's all I have for today. Uh, can I ask you a question, though? I got a thing uh, today about them working on the, the rail in phase one. Is that the new project that they're working on? I see it's in Middleborough, Lakeville, around that area. What that is, is that's phase one, which is the f f Fall River and uh, New Bedford South right. Coast Rail Project. Right. It's, uh, as I mentioned before, the, the phase one project has been fully funded in the capital improvement program, which is the CIP. So that's been funded, so there's no excuse not to go forward with it. There'll be a new station in Middleborough. Uh, we are working with our senator and our state rep to make sure that the Warham spur that comes down to Buzz's Bay is somehow included to go to that Middleborough station. Uh, and it'll be, originally it was gonna be 2022. It'll be operational 2022, it'll be testing, and it'll be fully operational in 2023. So what they're doing is they're working on culverts, bridges, et cetera, first to get them all done. And that's what the update you get every time you see that. It gives you an idea where they're working on those items. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mary? Yep. Peter? I probably should have done this under board comments, but I think we should all take note of the fact that uh, Alan was recently uh, voted to be the chairman of the Southeastern Region Economic Planning and Development District. Uh, he's been going to those meetings for I don't know how many years, a lot more years than I would have gone. Uh, but yet he put the work in. Uh, you know, he's been a good advocate for the town uh, with that agency. And uh, apparently they got tired of listening to all his requests because they made him the chairman. So congratulations for that. Thank you. My first, cha my first <laughs> official meeting is tomorrow. Your first official meeting? Yes, chair. There we go. Congratulations. Bring home, bring home the bacon. <laughs> oh, we got a heckle. We'll do a little heckling. All right. Uh, nothing for me. Everybody's all set. Okay, moving on. Uh, consent agenda. Do we have minutes from June 11th? I have the meeting minutes from June 11th. And, were we all uh, here? We were, yes, all okay. here. Okay, go ahead. So I move that we approve the meeting minutes from June 11th, Okay, motion made by Mary, seconded by Alan. Any discussion? Yeah, all in um, hold on, would you? And the licenses and um, permits um, my name was excluded as far as the roll call to open and close, so if that correction could be made. And um, See that, Mary? 
Yep. You just add them into the thing and she can make the correction. You just, keep, just write it in the initial. That's good enough. That's good, yeah. Yeah, he wasn't in the, yeah. And, and just for clarification, on the vote for appointment of David Morris, was that provisional for the one year pending his completion of his licensure? Year and a half. Before Bob yells at me with the, <laughs> <laughs> the, av the availability of the uh, being able to take the tests as well. In other words, if the tests weren't offered within that one year time so, frame. But he's actually taking the first one, I think, this week. Or, so. Yeah. So. Right. It's just, it was an understanding. So, so is it a year and a half? A year? I mean, they come up fairly often. Yeah. Just to kind of, Peter, go ahead, please. I'm sorry. Well, uh, he actually, under the state building code, uh, has the right to serve as a building commissioner in a provisional manner for 18 months before he has, actually has to pass the tests correct. So 18 and get certified. Months. So he's got 18 months under the state building that's code. That's fine, as long as that's what so. it is. Um, I just wanted a clarification on that. Okay. Um, I think that might be all. We so we don't need to add that into the minutes then? No. All right. I'll try to remember. All right. So what, uh, So motion made with the correction. Yes. Seconded with the correction. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, abstaining, it's unanimous. Five zero zero. Okay. That only leaves us one bit of duty. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn from Allen. Seconded by Me. Peter. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, aye. abstaining, it's unanimous. Thank you, Wareham. Have a great week. By the way, it's not Coming it's in. actually not debatable, so